Hello, welcome to Professor Sky's Record Review, the only first listen new music review show hosted by a French professor immediately after leaving the YMCA. Now, I actually haven't even left the YMCA parking lot. I'm in the parking lot right now. I am using the back of my car as a kind of rain cover because it's the first rain, well, it's the first freezing rain, the first sleet, the first snow of the season. And I have to wear a sweatshirt to stay warm. And that is the pathetically cheesy reason that I am doing this video outside. I'm wearing a sweatshirt and I'm reviewing Earl Sweatshirt's album, Feet of Clay. Now, this is not gonna be a particularly long inter uh, interview. It's not gonna be a particularly long video because there isn't that much to say about the album, which is not to say that it's not good. It's 15 minutes long. It's, I don't know, six or seven tracks. It is extremely strange and amazingly consistent. It's almost like not even really it's hard to even really call it like music or rap. It's hard to define what it is. So let me try right here. The way that he raps is with no breaks at all. And there's no even real change in his cadence whatsoever. There's no chorus. There's no unifying themes to any of the songs. The titles are rarely ever mentioned. Like I couldn't tell you what one song was, you know, one song is called 74, another's called like El Toro Value Meal. I couldn't tell you which one is which. The production is very similar. It's just like one sort of sample. There's no B sections. And it sounds like I'm kind of like dumping on this album, but I'm not. It's actually really interesting. Oh, someone's alarm's going off. Is that gonna ruin the audio here? I think it might. All right, I'm gonna hit pause and I guess I'll have to edit this video. Damn it, get, get your stuff together, would you? All right, it just stopped right now. <laughs> okay, so. Um, the nice thing is, is that he produced everything himself. Well, not everything, a couple tracks have a co-producer, but you look at the credits and basically Earl Sweatshirt is writing everything, is producing everything. And so it has this weird effect. It's basically like one single note. Like the whole album is like one, I would call it an inscrutable note. I can't figure out what he's rapping about. Half the time he's rapping about things that are super weird, you know, like someone tooted in the student commons and went home to comment. But then other times he'll like let out some kind of personal aspects, like uh, that he's missing his father or the difficulty of telling the truth to your friends and airing out your difficulties with your friends. So it's hard to really tell. I sort of compare listening to this like eating pound cake, okay? Like a good pound cake just exists on its own and it has a uniformity to its texture, you know? Like you're not eating a pound cake because it has frosting. You're not eating it because it has a crust. You're just eating it because of the texture and the taste that it is. That's what this album is. It is a slice of pound cake of just good rapping, very idiosyncratic, interesting rhymes, an interesting, steady, never changing flow. Good gravy, my hands are cold. I could barely even do my whole thing. Isn't it beautiful out here though? Like the, all these, they must have had to like keep the, the marsh there in order to have the rights to build this monstrosity. At times, like his rhyming gets like funny. Like I think I'm gonna quote here. I think he says Chuka Boogaloo at one point, uh, which I don't really know what the, what the idea is there, but he sort of reminds me at times almost of like a sleepy ghost face. Like the way that he plays with words and with language is abstracted to the point where meaning doesn't matter. What matters is sort of sound and consonants. So what I'm gonna do now is just play you a little bit of one of the songs, um, just randomly. I don't even know. I don't even know which song I'm gonna play, uh, but I'm gonna play it and then I'm, I guess I'll take the camera out and, and let you look around while I'm playing it. Play it now. To show in a rut, we getting over, sending up, living in a moment, you've been corrupt, had some gin to butt. Since it did, I figure what's the use in giving up. I can't give enough. She likes eating my sippy cup, healing cuss, revealingly, I'm refilling the pump, no concealing the enemy up at arms. Okay, I hope that wasn't all washed out. So I think what you heard there was just a good example. Whichever one I took, I might even take something randomly and just put it in there as an example of what this album is like. In sort of closing, I have a general theory I've been working on with most of my independent hip hop, which is that the strength of hip hop comes from the fact that it has strong mainstreams and strong independent currents. So I really say kind of thank God for Earl Sweatshirt. Like thank God for this weird idiosyncratic 15 minute thing because it keeps the art alive it keeps it moving it keeps so many different voices and styles all at once okay i'm gonna warm up get back home let my hands unfreeze and stop being a weirdo recording 
recording in the in the parking lot. All right. Uh, until next time, for Earl's sweatshirt, there. Oh, and my sweatshirt. There's the camera. <laughs>